Davis and I am a violist and vice president of the Omaha Chamber Music Society and I'm really going to miss seeing all of you this summer at the summer concert series and um, we're really looking forward to bringing it to you in some form or other later and however we can make it happen because it's really important to get everyone together for something so fantastic as these series have been and we appreciate your attendance and support and oh, outstanding generosity when it comes to supporting this organization so um, in the meantime I thought maybe I would share with you a little bit about what it's like to be a viola player. <laughs> it is a little different. Um, I I was a violinist um, in earlier years of my musical growth, and I um, I have a degree in violin performance, and I did take voice lessons, and I. My voice range is high soprano coloratura, in fact, but I haven't taken lessons or done anything remotely like that for years, so please don't ask me to sing because you're not going to want to hear what will happen, and neither will I. So, um, <laughs> speaking of coffee, so <clears throat> when I moved to Omaha, it was about 34 years ago, and I was madly practicing my violin um, for upcoming auditions for the Omaha Symphony and Lincoln Symphony. And uh, my husband at the time was Air Force. He played in the Air Force Band, so that's how we ended up in Omaha. I'm originally from Hamden, Connecticut. So it was a much different um, Midwest life, was much different to me than the East Coast, and I have to say I like it much better here, um, and it's been a wonderful journey. I think um, the instrument, the viola, really found me, uh, and I am forever grateful for that happenstance. Um, I, when I was practicing violin here, I arrived in um, June of that year, 1986, I guess it is, and um, <clears throat> I had just had a recent repair to the neck of my violin, which did not hold. And as I was practicing for the audition for the Omaha Symphony, we were in a house in those days with, with not a lot of money. We were in a house that did not have air conditioning. And it was brutal. And then I started, I was playing and playing and getting, my fingers were getting more sore and the sound was getting funny and everything. And all of a sudden I noticed the neck of my instrument was making cracking, popping sounds and moving. And that is not supposed to happen. So I, I didn't have another instrument. I did have a viola. And so, um, when I went to Lincoln Symphony, I auditioned on a borrowed violin and I said I also play the viola, which was a, kind of a fib because I didn't really play it. I mean, I if you play the violin, you, you can technically play the viola. But um, <clears throat> anyway, who's splitting hair? So I... <laughs> <laughs> I got viola music for my first concert with Lincoln Symphony and I never looked back. I had so much fun learning that music and just playing in the viola section. That's I found that's where I belonged. And um, violin, beautiful and wonderful, but I just, it didn't really fit me as well as the viola. And that, I think it has something to do with tone color and the fact that I have these arms that are too long, I don't know. Anyway, um, so right after that first concert, I then took an audition for the Omaha Symphony that originally was supposed to be violin and ended up being viola. And I've loved it ever since. We have a very interesting role in the orchestra as well as chamber music, and I feel it is our place to sort of well, we get some melodies, and it's beautiful when it happens, and it's a gorgeous color, and the sound is wonderful. 
um, but we're blending violins and cellos. And the additional challenge is that usually our, the backs of our instruments are to the audience. So the sound comes out the top and we're usually not facing in the right direction. So we have that going for us. Uh, yeah, the instrument is also quite a bit larger than the violin and does not have a standardized size. The violin, when you measure a, a string instrument, you go from the, and you turn it over so you can see the back and you're gonna go right from where the neck attaches straight across to the button on this side and that for violin is 14 inches. Um, violas can range anywhere from 15 inches, which is very small for a viola, <clears throat> to 17 and I've even seen a 17 and a half inch viola, which would, the person playing that has to be nine feet tall. I don't know. Um, anyway, so um, if you were to build a viola that was ergonomic, that was um, acoustically equivalent to a violin and cello, you would have to have it be 18 inches in body length. So my viola is 15 and a half inches and I have to hold my arm out pretty far to play it. But an 18 inch instrument would just be impossible. You'd be completely extended. So it's, um, it's a challenge for um, makers to try to make an instrument that is acoustically uh, can hold its own between the violin and the cello. So thanks for having coffee with me. Um, I can't wait to see you all again. I've missed everyone very much. And I'm looking forward to a great concert season when we do get going again. And I had a little friend join me. This is Susie. She doesn't really drink coffee, but she does like to listen to the viola. So take care of yourselves, and we'll see you soon. Bye-bye. Thank you.